Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am Ben, aka Lucent Moon. I will be the DM for this new Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition campaign, known as Monster Hunter Guild Reforged. Before uh, we start this campaign, I would like to give a very nice mention and shout out to Amelwind, who created a majority of the mechanics for Monster Hunter and translated them very well into a 5th edition setting. So I would like to give a thanks to them as that is the mechanics that I will be referring to for this campaign. And with me today for this one-on-one -on -one session is Deju Mercer, aka Druconic Sorceress, who yep. will be playing uh, your character. Name's... My name is Deidre Ashling Mercer. I'm uh, the owner of the Druconic Sorceress YouTube channel and game master for Dice of Disaster and many future campaigns that are coming up on the channel for you to keep an eye out. Uh, and today I'm here playing the role of Tulip Gilgamesh. Excellent. So let us begin. So, Tulip, how long have you been kind of out here? Would you like to explain a little bit about your character in this world? Uh, I'm sure people will catch up through context clues. Um, but for the most part, Tulip has been living out in the, uh, the wilds for, uh, I want to say at least eight years now. Um... She is, uh, she has cleared out this encampment, uh, which used to be, I need to remember what the wild palicos are called. Grimalkine. Grimalkine. Right. She's cleared out this Grimalkine encampment through methods, <laughs> certain methods. methods, um, and has been living here ever since, uh, sort of generally, uh, living one at one with nature uh but in the most primal sort of way where you're not like it's not like spiritually driven or anything uh you just sort of you there. live as a you live, you as, live a, as part as... of the ecosystem she's she's she could probably best be described as an invasive species actually that is a very very interesting way of describing your character and i will forever think of tulip as an invasive species now so, what's Tulip? Uh, what's Tulip doing right now? Or, I guess let me rephrase. What does Tulip tend to do uh, on her average day? Tulip's average day is typically just uh, running through the remind me Primal Sword Jungle. The Primal Sword Jungle. Yep, that's okay. Got it right. Uh, I forgot if it was jungle or rainforest. Um, she, she mostly spends her, her time sort of exploring this area and looking for things that are, uh, that could challenge her in a in combat. Very interesting. Has she come across anything that is worth her time? Or is most of the monsters that she has run into small and weak and just not worth the effort? Well, nothing is worth her time because she's not dead yet. Uh, but she's had Fair some point. some encounters with some larger monsters, uh, namely, I think we decided on a very young Rathalos at one point, which she was disappointed in because she thought Rathalos was supposed to be more impressive than it was because it was young. I mean, you've you've heard their nickname, which is King of the Skies, and you kind of got excited, and then when you inevitably killed it, you were very disappointed. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right, so, Tulip, you have woken up today uh, very early in the morning. The fog and the humidity still hangs low in the jungle today. Most of the nighttime creatures uh, are kind of starting to wind down, and the daytime creatures are kind of starting to wind up at this point. You're kind of in the gray area where both can kind of meet up and find each other as uh, the sun has yet to rise not very indicative of what the map tells you but uh it's if we were going by our time it is probably about only six in the morning roughly and as you've woken up uh your meat stockpile 
uh, is running pretty low. You could, you've the last portion of meat that you've had was about two days ago, since what's left is starting to uh, rot, and you've mostly been scrounging off of uh, vegetation and any fruit that the Primal Sword has to offer. And that's not a balanced diet to keep myself in top condition. You need 100% pure protein in Tulip's mind. That's not... No, she, she wants to keep a balanced diet, but no protein is not... You know, no protein is not a balanced diet. Okay, I get it. Plus, you pref would prefer to go kill something anyways. Alright. So, in one direction of one path, uh, you've taken that specific path a handful of times. It is a much more kind of traveled and padded down path. Not in the sense of a lot of wildlife travels it. It's more of just an established path that the uh, former Grimmelkind residents used a lot more often. Uh, the second path, which you have taken a lot more, um, it is padded down, but it doesn't really lead anywhere specifically. Like, to the average person or average monster, it would just be like a game trail. That's the best way I can describe it for you. Monsters travel it a lot more often than people would. Those are the two paths that you have. Which path will you take? Tulip, once again, is going to take her preferred path, which is the uh, less well-traveled uh, path. Uh, she figures the that uh, the more sort of travel an area is, the more likely it, likely it is that monsters avoid it in case of monster hunters or anything of that nature. Uh, so she's going to head up this direction. I see. So as you're kind of going down that path, um, there's a lot of curves in it. Um, kind of goes up and down small inclines and declines in the uh, jungle elevation uh you do eventually come to a fork in the road and i mean you've traveled this fork before going left takes you to a kind of a marshy area it's like a when it rains and just the humidity it tends to pool in that one area so it, it kind of has become a marsh by this point and traveling right takes you to a more higher elevation you haven't been up that way nearly as much. Uh, which one will you take? Uh, I think we're going to go... Uh, high elevation is actually pretty good for probably scouting out. So I'm going to head... Whatever the higher elevation is, like a some sort of hill or mountain. Actually, this is a jungle. Is it? <laughs> is it reasonable to say that I'll be able to... Uh, scout anything out there or is it more reasonable to say there are going to be trees and foliage in the way uh you pro you can scout i mean it's not the highest point in the jungle but it is higher than normal i mean it's a jungle still so there are still going to be trees regardless all right i'll 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 try and scout something out Okay. So, as you arrive in our new place, um, this area you aren't as familiar with compared to the lower level marsh area. Uh, you've been up here a handful of times. The kind of ruins that you find kind of scattered around the Primal Sword, they are most prevalent up here specifically um like examining them on your past outings in search of food uh you gather it's something like a temple based that was kind of carved naturally rather artificially built that was about the extent that you had gathered All right can i just got anything out from here can i get to whatever the highest point is here and like I don't know, make some sort of check about it. 
Uh, yeah, you can make, uh... Make me a perception check. See what you can find. Ooh, I'm good at these. 23. That's a very good perception check. So, since you are kind of in tune with nature in kind of a primal sense, you've developed a... I wouldn't say it's symbiotic, but it is like, it's a relationship that benefits you specifically with uh, the local endemic life called scout flies. Uh, small, they're firefly-like creatures. Uh, you kind of pick up on scent or any kind of food, and the scout flies kind of, when they're near you, they will guide you, and they'll glow as they do so. Bro. Leave. Charlie. What? We are recording. I was not told that. You also need to turn off the uh, soundboard here. What's that? You need to turn off soundboard in this server. <laughs> right, I have to I have to do that. Okay. Alright. Back on track. So the scout flies um they are luring you here specifically into the uh it's one of it's pretty much the only real artificial built part of this ruins okay. so it's just like a like a hold on i can is that like a proper entrance to something or is it like just just to this sort of ground area uh so this portion specifically um, it's definitely been padded down, um, and the scout flies, uh, there are a lot of markings in this area specifically. Um, a lot of scratches, a lot of, like, footprints, and also, like, small traces of, like, actual hide and bones are also here. So, you kind of gather in your head that... This might be like a nest of some kind, or kind of a layer, like this high area might actually be a layer of a certain creature. Okay. Is there any other check you want to make? I could make like a survival maybe, to see if I can get any further information. Survival or nature Pro would survival. probably be the... 15. 15, not bad. So, looking at this layer, you kind of go through your head of what you run into. You kind of, you think back to the Rathalos that you had encountered, and you kind of draw on the knowledge that you kind of picked up before you were exiled into the jungle, that Rathalos, they like high elevations. However, the hide traces that are left do, do not indicate Rathalos as it's green versus a Rathalos color, which is red. Nod, nod. Okay. Uh, Scoutflies pull, pulling me up anywhere else, or... Uh, scout flies are pulling you also in this direction right here towards these kind of ruined pillars. Okay, we can check out these pillars. What exactly do the scout flies get out of this relationship? It's not particularly anything. I forget the exact term, and I I feel really bad for forgetting that term because it it would be really helpful for a campaign like this. But it is the uh, relationship where only one party benefits and the other party doesn't really gain or parasitic. lose anything. That's not parasitic, oh, no. Oh, yeah, but they lose something if it's parasitic, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, as Scoutflies have drawn you over here, uh, I wasn't able to put it on the map, but there is a lot more bones in this particular area. Uh, like a creature just kind of kicks them out of the nest area and puts them here in this specific area. 
uh, you recognize a handful of like like specific parts or like bone carapace of certain monsters. Like you recognize like skeletons of small monsters or small monsters like Jagras, for example. You recognize the skull. You recognize the back spikes that they have. Alright. Now the question is, do I go searching for this thing, or do I wait for it to come to me? What do you think Tulip would do in this situation? I think Tulip waits for it to come to her. She's not in no rush. Is there any particular spot that, uh... You want to wait right for the creature? You just wait in its nest? Yeah. Or... Okay. Establishing dominance. Establish dominance by rolling up directly in its home. Alright, so you wait for... You wait for like a good, probably, 40 minutes to an hour, maybe, before you hear something kind of coming up from this area. It definitely sounds large, so you know that it's definitely not human-sized at all. And as uh, as it kind of crests the hill, you make out uh, you make out large wings, green, kind of rosy spikes on it. And as it becomes more visible, uh, you can see. A large kind of rose horn on its face, and also the bright yellow eyes as it crests. Kind of reaches this point specifically. You can kind of, its full body is now in view. And you recognize this creature as an Espinas. Hmm, I see. Tulip, uh... Cracks her knuckles and uh, awaits to see how it reacts. So, it's not very happy. It's staring at you directly. And uh, as it approaches even more, its tail is swinging back and forth. And it's like, it's almost like a pounce position. Like, its head is low, but its back is kind of arched upward like it's ready to try and jump on top of you. Okay. Uh, Tulip. Tulip's uh, stature sort of lowers a little bit. Uh, and she looks okay. one arm like sort of dangle uh, at her side uh, in preparation. All right. So this creature, or Espinas, uh, lets out a very loud roar as it prepares to attack you. What uh, what's Tulip gonna do? Tulip's preparing using her teacher, uh, which is called. Remind myself real quick. Counter Strike. He's preparing Counter Strike. Counter Strike. Okay. So, the Espinas, uh, immediately you recognize it as, uh, the underside of its wings, uh, start glowing a little bit. They start going red and, like, vein like. Like, it's the veins in its wing membrane and its shoulders and leading up to its face. Uh, they begin glowing as it enrages and is charging you with its horn lowered, ready to attack you. And because it moves into, into place, uh, I land Counter-Strike. I don't land it, but I get to make it Counter-Strike. Uh, go, go, get it. Um, uh, yeah, that's gonna hit. Cool. Uh, normal damage. Uh, 11 damage, uh, plus 2, uh, 13 damage, uh, and I'm going to make this a Haymaker. Okay. Um, 
which means that it has to roll a constitution save any time that wants to use its mouth for basically anything. Interesting. Alright, that is a saving throw you said, correct? Uh, it isn't going to make a... Dexterity save. Oh, dex save. Okay. Yeah, it's going to make a dex save so that it, it can to see if it gets. And first. Here, die. Nope. Ouch. All I right. think Tulip just rips this thing's jaw <laughs> with a nat one. <laughs> a little bit. I don't know. Describe what, uh, I wouldn't say you rip the Espinas's jaw off, but, uh, you've done, you've done real. I mean, this thing was very rash as, as you probably could tell, kind of just openly charging right into its nest. Uh, describe what Tulip essentially does um, as this Espinas is charging. Tulip sort of rolls under the horn and, like, grabs it by the corner of its mouth and just pulls, and, uh, her hand tears through flesh. I see. So sort of, like, that area right there just, just brings Yeah, so, like, head through. area... Uh, and that's one attack you were, two. <laughs> you were just aiming like indiscriminately at the face, or like were you aiming for a specific part, like the uh, eyes? She's, or... she's aiming for the mouth. That's what uh, ah, the, the aimmaker mouth. is. Um, I'm gonna make a secondary attack. Um, okay. To just knee this thing in the face. Following that. Very interesting. Uh, 16. Which I believe should hit. Uh, yeah, that hits. Uh, six damage. All right. And in addition to like just sticking your hand into its flesh, you've also need this thing in the jaw. And the kind of momentum from both of that kind of sends it kind of off course a little bit. It goes that direction as it kind of fumbles and kind of just crashes onto the ground. Incredible. would now be a good point to kind of do the jump between start of combat and uh, uh, next. Yeah, I think uh, we can cut with Tulip uh, healing the blood on her hand and fully, fully serial killer licking it off. Alright, you want to describe that so we have a proper cut? Uh, yeah, Tulip brings her hand up to her mouth and just fully, like, like a like a a serial killer in an anime licking knife off the blade, just oh, kind of licks uh, a portion of the blood off the fi uh, her fingers and uh, runs her hand back through her hair, and we cut. Oh wow! Okay. I will. This thing turn. runs her hand back through her fingers, and that runs her fingers back through her hair. Yeah, I don't. I mean, would Tulip even want blood in her hair? Let's be real. Have you seen the color of her hair? Oh, I thought that was just her regular hair color. Is that actually just dried blood? It might be a little bit that. Damn. Alright. Tulip uh, sort of returns. Uh, a little bit more bloodied. How much damage do you think she's take take for that entire battle? Uh, considering how rash the <laughs> our Espinas was, I would say I'd say she probably only took like 14 damage for that whole battle. Okay, that's pretty solid. 14 damage. <laughs> um, yeah, Tulip. You still got a still have a good uh chunk of health left. Tulip sort of is just sort of dragging like a chunk. <laughs> She's dragging like the finished. leg with. She, she's dragging the whole leg back with her. Yeah. I'm gonna stop right there. And just tulip would actually would actually would tulip have a preference as to like any specific monster part that she enjoys eating the most? I don't think so. She just she's kind not, of takes. She's not in it to dungeon mesh you this bitch. She's in it to survive. <laughs> survive understand she's in it for the, the combat first and foremost well uh, yes and then survival is secondary 
Survival is secondary. Uh, the thrill of battle, as I understand, Tulip is first, above all else. Yeah. Alright, so, with this Espinasa leg that you've... I assume she just kind of took her hands and kind of just dug through the ar the hide and muscle and fat and just kind of progressively ripped off the leg until yeah. she got it free. Yeah. So as you kind of start eating this, and I'd say it's like a good 15, maybe 20 minutes before you start hearing, uh, you hear something else coming down this path right here. She looks over. Sort of and uh, it doesn't it doesn't sound large. It doesn't sound like a actual monster that's coming down this path, though you can hear the you can hear the clink of metal and what all, what sounds like boots hitting earth essentially. That is kind of what you you interpret it as cuz I mean Tulip knows what the sound of metal and boots hitting earth sounds like. Yeah. She's aware. And after good, like, it starts kind of soft at first, and then it gets louder, and eventually a figure steps out of kind of the still low-hanging fog. What is, uh, what is Tulip's reaction? Tulip, like, Tulip does not appear threatened by this, uh, interloper, uh... She just stares at her as she approaches. So judging as Tulip kind of eyes this this woman, uh, the obvious attire becomes very apparent, and the uh, equipment that she has. This is without a doubt a monster hunter. Yeah, that tracks. Are you the, uh... Did you kill the Espinas? The tulip should sort of stands and, uh, like, steps forward. Kind of uh, tosses, <laughs> tosses the Espinas yeah. leg, the half-eaten Espinas leg to the side. <laughs> what does it look like? I'm gonna take, uh... Pretty solid guess that you're not a licensed hunter with the guild, are you? Am I correct? Real impressive there, Sherlock. Really so doing this... <laughs> some, some real detective work there, bud. Alright, so this hunter kind of, her hands kind of go back, kind of behind her hips. All right, you get one chance to come quietly. I don't appreciate poachers. Are you going to come quietly? Doesn't poaching imply that I took the animal further away from where it was supposed to be? Doesn't it sort of imply like a, like a form of, what's the word, trafficking? Is that Tulip saying that? Yes. Or... <laughs> Tulip says this out loud. <laughs> Does Doesn't poaching just... imply some form of trafficking was involved? I feel Regardless. Like, I feel like poaching is a sort of improper term when there's not really any operation going on here. Regardless, you're a non-licensed hunter. Who took the life of a monster on guild reserved land. That's poaching in my book. Now are you going to come quietly? Or, and as she kind of says that, the uh, she takes the dual blades from behind her. And looking at the dual blades specifically, they don't really look like blades in the traditional sense. They're more of sickles. 
and they look to be made out of hide itself. Do I have to do this the hard way? Come quietly. What do you take me for? Tulip hits a uh, laser blue Azrael pose, a, a real come at me gesture. Um, you want to describe what that pose looks like? I look up I laser really blue pick. Azrael. I'll have to do that. So the hunter takes her dual blades and kind of sticks them above her head really quickly. And a kind of a red aura kind of pops up, like, around her, kind of envelops her a little bit. All right. We're doing it the hard way. Do a first counterattack. All right. Uh, combat. Combat start. I'll toggle combat on. Okay. And I can roll you initiative. And now I have to remember myself how to put initiative on, sadly. Uh, click on character, click on toggle combat stance, go to combat uh, thing, and you... Um... I'll figure it out. Uh... Alright, there we go. Oh boy. All right, so you, Tulip, are now in combat with Amber Azumeth, the hunter. Mm -hmm. And uh, Amber is going to take a bonus action, and she is going to down a demon drug. And uh, as you, as Tulip, like, before Tulip even moves, like, you just see Amber, like, with, like, one hand free like she kind of stows one blade quickly pops out a vial of like some kind of red liquid and just downs it in a couple seconds and the red aura around her kind of becomes a bit more intense what is tulip gonna do uh tulip is uh Tulip's poised to counter strike right now because that was an action she took before combat began. So so long as you were allowing that to be the case, um, uh, yeah, that was fine. So she's waiting for an approach. Her counter strike triggers are approach and attack. Approach and attack. All right. So Amber, as she re, or I guess she takes her sec the blade that she had stowed as she took her demon drug. Like in an uh, like in a blur of speed, like kind of beyond what you were expecting. Uh, she just immediately kind of gets up in your face and is prepared to attack you. Okay, well triggers uh, counter strike, counter strike right. with a with a nice kick. Uh, attack, normal twenty six. All right, gotta interesting. That's got to hit, right? Uh, yeah, so that does hit. Alright. Um, I'm going to also make this a haymaker. I don't know... I see. I don't know how much of her mouth she's going to use, but if she's going to be downing more of those demon drugs, then... Uh, also, that's 15 because it's a counter-strike, so it gets a plus 2. It gets my... Yeah, 15. Um, and I need her to make a dexterity save, or... Uh, Yep. Does not beat. Um, Does not beat. All right. So Tulip throws a a full uh, a full Ryu Street Fighter donkey kick into the, into her face. I see. Very interesting. So as as Tulip kind of does that, it sends Amber back a little bit. Uh, she is. Not, uh, she's definitely caught off guard a little bit, although, uh, the mask kind of on her head kind of protected her a little bit, so she's not, like, she's not completely, like, dazed out of her mind, but she is definitely caught off guard. Is she she kind of white. Make her attack against me first. 
She kind of wipes a little bit of blood off of her lip. Like, she looks a little bit surprised, like, kind of a surprise, but then kind of turns into, like, a little bit of a smirk as uh, she preps her dual blades again for another attack. She didn't make an attack on me before, so we should probably roll that attack first. Right. So she's, again, going to go back in. That is a 21. Uh, I really landed an attack. I am... Ah, oh, shit. I don't think I have enough... Uh... And I haven't taken attack, uh, a damage yet, have I? Uh, no. Not for this combat, you haven't. Okay. So I cannot... Uh, deflect that. So I'm, I'm just gonna take the brunt of that damage. Uh, that was just to attack. That wasn't damage. Yeah. Once I once I get damaged, but I'm gonna t I six damage. Okay, I'm fine. Yeah. So Amber goes in again. Like she's still abnormally fast, and uh, you like it's kind of a grazing strike. Well, I wouldn't say grazed. It it's definitely cut you deeper than just a scratch, but it wasn't, like, so bad that, like, you're in any real danger. I'm fine. Uh, is it... So what's Tulip's reaction to, uh... What's Tulip's reaction is to that? Turn? Uh, yes, it is your turn. Uh, cool, I'm, uh, gonna use my first attack this turn to grapple her. Alright. Uh, make me an athletics check. Athletics. You got it. Shit! Not a good... Not a good athletics check on my part. Very yeah. good on her part. Okay. <laughs> Tulip kind of... Tulip fumbled a Tulip, little bit. Tulip, like, goes to grab her and, like, is like, oh, this is not as easy when... This is strangely... It's not harder. as easy when this you're smaller. <laughs> this is strangely harder <laughs> now that you're smaller. Um... Failing that, she's just gonna uh, fully kick this woman again. Uh, like she's gonna try and like kick, like kick her since she failed. Yeah. All like, right. Uh, grapple is uh, uh, one of my attacks this turn. Uh yeah, so that definitely hits twenty three. All right. That hits. For damage for seven damage. Seven damage, not bad. All right, so you you do get a kick off. Doesn't really stagger Amber too much. Oh wait, I'm also gonna burn attention to make that do one more damage. Ah, burn attention. You and got it. Gain that one tension back from right. from landing the hit. So as I said, doesn't really affect Amber too much. Like it's definitely annoying. Like you can tell it's annoying. But didn't really phase her all that much. And she is once again going to... Uh, she's going to hit you with a different... She's going to hit you with her dual blades again, but she's going to go for a special kind of attack. So she raises her dual blades and kind of prepare... She kind of... How do I describe this? She, like, readies her dual blades and, like... She, you can kind of tell, like, she's about to, like, spin, I guess. That's the best way I could describe it. As she goes in for what is known as the Evade Slash. And, once again... Does not hit. Does... Wow, that doesn't Tulip, hit? Tulip just raises an arm and catches the side of one of her blades and just flings it to the side, throwing her off balance. I see. Very interesting. And uh, Amber is going to take a bonus. She stows one of her blades again and takes out another vial. Hey, would you consider Although... this an action that requires her mouth that she needs to make a con save to use? 
since she got haymakered. You know what? Yeah, that is a con save. A con save to be able to properly open her mouth? A con save to properly open her mouth. That does Ouch. not beat my DC. Yep, so Amber, she takes out another vial, although she kind of fumbles with it. Uh, she is unable to kind of, she gets the cap off, but she's unable to, like, get it up to her mouth effectively. All right. And that is the end of her turn. It is Tulip's turn now. Alrighty, son of a bitch. This time, this time I'm grappling you. This time I'm gonna get you. 25. That hits. Let's see you beat that, bitch. And it's not an attack. It's a. Uh, it's she has to make an opposed athletics. Athletics. I'm grappling. All Does right. Beat. All right. She is now grappled. She cannot move away from me. Um. You can look at. Uh, I think spheres changes how grapple works a little bit, but. Um, for the most part. That's in your features tab, correct? I'm just gonna pull that up. Uh, and while I while I grab her, I'm going to pump. Uh, I don't need to use anything, but I'm using hammerlock, so she has uh, disadvantage uh, on a attempts to uh, escape this grapple. I see. Uh, then I'm pumping a attention and making another maim attack. Maim attack. Um. 25, uh, 26. All right, that hits. And then a damage, normal. Uh, 9 plus 1, 10. I'm still at 3. I believe she also should have disadvantage on attacks against me. I'll look up exactly how grappled works. All right, and that's the end of Tula's turn, correct? Yeah. All right. So, Amber, she is very annoyed with you right now. Alright. All right. I've had it. And she kind of... How are you grappling her exactly? How is Tulip grappled to Amber right now? Um, is, it kinda, is it almost kind of like... Is it kind of like the full Nelson kind of hold? Or no. like bear hug? Tulip, Tulip grapples with a singular hand at any given moment. She has... So how is Tulip grappled specifically? Come on. Tulip is Can grappling uh, fully left hand on her throat, holding her slightly in the air. Ah, okay. Interesting. So Amber's hand kind of moves to the moves to her back, and she takes out... It's really small. It's like a pellet. It's about the size of a golf ball. And she crushes it in her hand. Uh, I'm gonna need you to make a con save right now. Oh, I don't know that I'm good at these. I don't have any proficiency in these constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throw. Can I, um, I'm gonna quickly check if I can use tension to, to boost this. Uh, I do not have that ability, I don't think. Uh, I can. Okay, I'm gonna pump three tension to get a plus three to this. All right. Same throw. Total bonus plus three. Twenty-three. All right. I am quickly reading up on the item that Amber has just used against you. Please give me a moment. Your max HP is twenty-nine. That does not pass as you are below. Yeah, I'm at nine half. HP right now. Yeah, you're <laughs> below. You're below that. half. So unfortunately, uh, that does not work. Uh, what Amber has hit you with is a trank bomb designed for monsters. She that just hit you with track. that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure even if you did pass, you would still feel the effects of a trank bomb designed for large monsters. <laughs> Yeah, when you're sitting All right, at a so, nine HP, probably. So as you kind of, as you're just in this chokehold, like you didn't, 
you were kind of like so focused in like the battle that you didn't really notice what happened and then you just kind of you just kind of see like a cloud of like purplish pink smoke just blast into your face <laughs> and then like you immediately like start feeling dizzy and like the world just starts getting blurry and spinning like like crazy uh passes out <laughs> yeah you kind you you kind of let go of amber as she remains standing and you just fall like you are knocked out completely you are completely out and kind of kind of before you pass out like as like the world is like starting to go black you can kind of you can like still hear it like you know how in movies like when someone is getting knocked out and like someone talking to them it sounds really weird and distorted yeah. you know what i'm talking about yeah i know what you're talking about so like you can kind of hear amber saying damn this one has potential I'm talking about me like <laughs> like a, a fucking thing don't you lecture me with your $30 haircut. So, like, kind of, as you kind of hear that, like, the world fully goes black. And, like, it's not, like, the go black as in, like, you can't really hear anything. You can hear, like, garbled sound. Nothing really concrete, but you kind of, you can also feel stuff, too. Like, you can still kind of feel what's going on around you. Like, you can feel yourself being picked up. You can feel yourself kind of getting loaded onto something. And uh, that's kind of about what you can tell before uh, you eventually kind of start regaining your senses. Although, you are now... You now find yourself in... What appears to be a cell. Quickly repause it, actually. I thought you're... Alright, so... After... An undetermined amount of time for you, uh... The effects of <laughs> the Trank Bomb wear off, and you find yourself in a prison cell. What is Tulip's reaction? Tulip, like... Tulip, like, looks around and is like, ah, This shit again? This shit again, as in, like... She's been in prison before. She's been in... <laughs> right, you were exiled. Of course you were in jail before. So, kind of... Looking out of, like, the door... Like, through the bars and the bar window. You can see two guards in what you what you know immediately as Rathalos armor. And they are standing on either side of the door. Do you guys going to let me out soon, or what's the sort of the situation here? Uh, one of the guards kind of turns his head a little bit. You're awake. Finally. Yeah. Are the effects fully gone, I presume? How do you feel right now? Make Miss a fucking Gilgash. guess. So, both of the guards kind of, they turn fully now, they approach the door, they have, uh, they have shackles ready. And kind of as you look down, Tulip, you do notice that your wrists and, like, hands are, like, they are shackled in very thick cuffs, and your legs are also kind of chained. Oh, this again. Ooh. So, one of the guards uh, opens the door slightly as another guard is ready with him. Do you look sort, back, of, sort of, uh, like, fake out lunges at them, but, like, not really? Just to see how they'll react? The guards do not flinch at all. Alright. 
Impressive, is, in, in my, I mean, in Tulip's mind, is that a sign of, like, respect or something? Like, damn, she's they like, didn't flinch? She's like, okay, that's more impressive than I was expecting. More, more impressive than I was expecting, okay. But still, also, a missed opportunity on my part, because I could have actually attacked them, and they wouldn't have drawn their weapons. <laughs> Fair enough. And Tulip does think that she can beat these guys even with her uh, hands tied. <laughs> even with her hands and legs tied. Yeah. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Chase after her? They're in heavy armor. She's quicker than them. She's, she's a wood elf. How tall did you say she is? She's like 5 foot something. She's 5'1", like five... but she's quick. She's, a, five foot... she's quick for 5'1". Five 5'1", one. Five one speed demon. Alright, so as like... As you kind of like... Kind of step out... Uh, one kind of goes in front of you. Another goes behind you they both put shackles on you uh the guard behind you uh puts extra shackles on your um he attaches them to your wrist cuffs and attaches them to like more links in your uh leg shackles and basically prevents you from lifting uh your arms up like to their full length he very restricted and the second one just kind of puts extra shackles on your wrists and like I lower arm not upper arm so like you can't really bring them out fully either yeah let's get this shit over with so they kind of they're not grabbing you specifically they're just kind of holding you by the shackles so like they're not actually touching you and uh they bring you it's about a two minute walk like through the halls and like you go up, you go like up one floor from like the windows that you pass, like like in your brief look out, like you are in like some sort of like very, very wealthy city. That is pretty much all you gather. And you are eventually led into what appears to be a meeting room from what you gather at the ta and the uh, table in the center of the room. And you also notice the uh, what appears to be a dragonborn or elder elder folk as Monster Hunter calls it. And uh, the guards have released you and uh, they exit the room. Oops. Not a smart move on their part. She says out loud. You are also still shackled, mind you. She knows. So the uh, elder folk kind of... He's currently reading, like, what a... He's, like, kind of shuffling through his papers right now. He looks up and, uh... You see the face of an elder dragon... Like, the features are there. Uh, you know it's a Kushala Deora of... Like, just the face tells you. Like, the scales are also metal. The eyes are, like, the bright blue and, like, gold that all Kushala have. Uh, this... Person, uh... So what, you're he my has, like... defender? <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought that was you, but I burst into... Beach, my bad. Go ahead. He has, like... It's not an overly, like... How do I describe his... He looks... I wouldn't say it's overly friendly, but, like, definitely a person who is approachable. Like, someone that, like, you could approach and talk to, like, without any real issue or difficulty. Philip takes a seat, fully legs up on table. So you're the public defender for wherever we are. I assume you are, Miss. Kind of, he looks back down at his, uh, looks back down his paper. Gilgamesh, am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah, that's right. Who else would I fucking be? You got a whole cast of other people. There wasn't anyone else in the prison as far as I could tell. Trust me. There are other people in the prison. Mm -hmm. You happen to be placed on an empty floor. So, lucky you. 
And yes, I am your, uh, counselor. Or public defender. That also works, too. Counselor Deora. I have been brought in to represent you in your upcoming trial. And I'm also bound to read your charges. I am aware yeah, that... I I see Miss Azumeth had also informed you, I assume, when you first crossed paths. Does poaching not include, like, a form of trap? I swear, I could have sworn that was part of poaching. Am I wrong? Poaching, <laughs> while you technically are correct in the actual term of poaching miss gilgamesh the guild deems poaching as any hunting outside guild reserved land oh, deemed okay. as suitable hunting grounds so the charge of poaching was brought against you since you killed an espiness outside of the primal sword jungle hunting reserve well, I must say, I haven't taken on many poaching cases. I haven't heard of one that included a monster such as an Espinas. Don't tell anyone this, but that is rather impressive. And Miss oh, I'm telling Azumath... everyone that. I know how impressive it is. That comment also extended to Miss Azumeth, who brought you in. But I'm getting sidetracked. Anyway. So, your trial is tomorrow at dawn. You are going before one of the members. Correction, two members of the Guild's High Council. And Miss Azumeth will also be on your small council that will be hearing this case. Mm -hmm. So, now, Miss Gilgamesh, the charge of poaching is automatically death penalty. I am bound <laughs> to tell you that. Okay. Did Tulip kind of say that with, like... <laughs> Tulip, like... <laughs> Short of that idea. <laughs> Alright. Combine that with your former murder charge. Okay. No, the count like the cat like you can kinda tell that Charge counselor... implies that it wasn't that it didn't fully happen. Like the counselor is like kind of like, you can tell that, like, he was about to just be like, oh, God. <laughs> like, he re he just kind of realized that the absolute uphill battle he's going to have to take you through. <laughs> but D, my man. Charge implies that it w I wasn't convicted. I have a murder conviction. But that doesn't mean it happened. Is oh, that essentially... I oh, I can assure you that it happened. Okay. <laughs> the uh... biggest grin on her exact same expression as her token. The counselor is not... Like, he's not impressed. <laughs> he, like, if anything, like, he just... You can tell he's trying to hide it, but the eyes convey, like... I swear to God, if this goes, I swear to God, I'm gonna get my job taken away from me if I if I do this badly. Got quite an uphill battle. Okay, Miss Gilgamesh, I believe there is a way to get you out of this. Are you willing to hear it? I mean, sure. Knock yourself out. So, in most cases, poaching is almost always death. No question, regardless of outcome. Mm -hmm. However, 
almost all poaching cases did not have the factor that yours has. That being a potential factor of not knowing where reserve lines are drawn. Did you know you were in guild reserved hunting grounds? Or did you not? I mean, yeah. Is that a yeah to, like, she did know, or that, like, yeah, she didn't? Yeah, she knew. And she just says that out loud, yeah. I presume? She, she hits them with the... Uh, I mean, yeah. Is my client a perfect man? No. Yeah, I killed him. <laughs> it's... I mean, yeah, I killed him. So the counselor just fully... He puts the paper up again as he's, like, pretending to look through it, but you you know he's not looking through it. He's just trying to hide the obvious, I swear to fuck, I swear to god, I'm gonna kill this person. You can try. <laughs> like, he is not, he's not having a good time right now. Okay. Miss Gilgamesh. Let's say you didn't know where reserve lines were drawn. Okay. the case, but continue. We can get you out of the death penalty, potentially, if we plead a guilty by technicality. Would you like me to explain more? Listen, man. I'm each level with you. I don't really care. I don't think they could kill me. So, if you want to do your best to make sure that you don't, uh, you don't lose this case so that's not on your record or whatever. Knock yourself out. But quite frankly, this doesn't concern me. Okay. Guilty by technicality. In short is... It will be on your record that you had poached, but you won't be given death penalty. That is the gist of what this is. However, you would be in debt to the guild. I don't know what they would put you in for. That is a good as guess as anybody. But it would get you off death penalty. Look, man, I don't know why you're telling me this. Again, I don't care. You kind of... Counselor Deora just... He kind of gets up. So I presume... That you at least, are going to take this. You've made it very clear to me that you don't care for the outcome. So... Quite frankly, I'd like to see what the death penalty can do. I'd like to see him try. But... You're the lawyer here, so you f figure it out yourself. Counselor Deora kind of, he ushers, like, to the door, and the guards come back in. I will see you tomorrow, Miss Gilgamesh. And a word of advice, when the council comes in, just let me do the complex talking. Sure, less work for me. So, Deora, he heads out. And yeah, the no guards, problem. once again, take you back to your cell. You wait out the night. And next morning, at dawn, guards are back. They do the same routine they did when they brought you to the room. They reshackle you, same place. And they lead you into a new room
They, as you are led into a, it appears to be like, I mean, it's a courtroom. Mm. However, instead of just like one seat, you see three. Um, big, giant marble statues of what appears to be, I mean, it is a dragon. You can't really tell what the markings are. You've heard of the Tale of the Five which is uh, the very famous legend in the guild. You know the basics, five dragons, yada, yada, yada. You didn't really pay attention. Who does not care, yeah. So, what does Tulip do? Tulip is just standing right now. She doesn't know what how this area's court system works. Uh, Counselor Deora kind of nods at you. He also kind of like, kind of nods his head towards the table behind him, right over here, for you to just sit down. Philip once again has her feet up on the table. So as you kind of take your seat, you do overhear a little bit of the conversation between Deora and the other person that he is conversing with. You kind of eavesdrop a little bit. Yeah. Can you make me, uh... Perception? What would that check? Yeah, perception. Give me a perception. 22. 22. Alright. So you catch, uh... Because, I mean, I assume you don't really care about pretty much anything. Well, so Tulip, you're... Again, Tulip does not really give a shit about what's going on. She's listening in because it's more interesting than not doing anything. Fair enough. So, you overhear the, a lot of the stuff that you heard yesterday. You know, guilty by technicality. You hear the other side saying, you know, they're going for death penalty. You hear Amber's name also brought up in the conversation, and Amber's Rich. And Amber's comments about you, the you hear the this one has potential comment that you heard kind of in your tranquilized days. Yeah. And uh, as you hear that, uh, the large door over here opens. Uh, the guards behind you immediately kind of stand at attention and... The two, what you presume as counselors, uh, they stand at attention also. And the first of three figures steps out. A, again, an elder folk. In But instead of Kushala Deora, this is of Kalv Taroth descent. Uh... Her scales are a brilliant gold. And again, royal clothing. She takes her seat at her chair of the council. Another figure that Tulip definitely recognizes as Amber steps out as well. Immediately locks eyes and does not break that eye contact uh, for the entirety of this for the uh, entirety of this courtroom hearing. Yeah. So, as you're just dead eye locked with Amber, you can catch you catch the glimpse of like some bandages. She has a small bandage like on her lip and chin area. She has one kind of around her head. She also has one kind of in her shoulder area. And she takes her seat, and a third and final figure exits from the doorway. This is not of any elder folk or Wyvarian descent, from what you can tell. Their hair is long, or moderately long, although their eyes are the most intriguing feature. They it's almost like they're piercing into your soul, and they can see, like, everything that you've done. However, 
their expression is calm, collected, and a calming kind of aura, although Tulip doesn't really care. Tulip does not notice this. So, the three counselors nod the two defenders, as I guess you would call them, nod and bow. The guards bow as well and do the same. Deora takes his seat next to you, and the opposing council takes their place. The central, I guess you could say, judge in this case looks to you, Tulip. Miss Gilgamesh, would you approach the central podium, please? You are aware of the charges brought against you. Yeah. He glances over to Counselor Deora, eh, to which Deora stands. Judge, we plead guilty by technicality in this case. While Miss Gilgamesh does not deny the act of poaching. She was unaware of guild lines for hunting reserves. Mika nods and he looks to the opposing council who stands and bows again. Judge, we are going for guilty Without question, Miss Gilgamesh here committed an act so heinous in our society it is treated worse than murder. We must not let this person get off without proper and just punishment. Mika nods and stands from his seat. Both of your pleadings are taken into account. This trial will begin. And over the course of pretty much the whole day, it goes back and forth. Amber takes the podium a handful of times, discussing her account of the day and the events leading up to when she encountered you, Tulip. Uh, she describes it as pretty much the exact same as the events that played out. She f Amber finished a hunt. She found the corpse of an Espinas with its leg ripped off. She followed the trail of blood and found you. A short scuffle ensued. However, she ultimately was able to take you in. A lot of the back and forth is pretty much the same. You're not really paying attention. But Counselor Deora, he brings up the fact that Tulip, you were exiled for almost a decade. And that Tulip couldn't really have known exactly where Guild Reserve lines are. She might have had an idea before she was exiled, but his argument leaned heavily on the fact that due to that you were exiled for pretty much eight years, and that guild lines had changed since then, that Tulip unknowingly was in a reserve when she killed the Espinas. If at any point all... anyone uh, like asks Tulip to confirm or deny any of his claims, she goes... Yeah, if that's, story, if that's the narrative we're running with, sure. What, do you want to... If at any point he, uh, any of the, uh, people up here, not council, they're not full council, right? Whatever. Count. If any it's, of them this, ask, yeah. like, ask, like, 
Tulip specifically uh, like, to confirm or deny any of his claims. Uh, she just kind of goes with it. She responds with, with, uh, and in these words exactly, if that's the narrative we're running with, then sure. Wow. Is that is that really what you want to go yeah. with for Tulip? Yes. All right then. So the counselor, counselor Dara, also brings up the point that that Amber had also br in regards to like her comments about you having potential Tulip. He does bring up the fact that other poaching incidents had only ever involved like smaller monsters or monsters that really that pretty much most beginner hunters wouldn't really have trouble taking out. And the fact that you had also taken out an Espinas, albeit a juvenile Espinas that wasn't fully grown and couldn't fully control its abilities, that it should count for the fact that she clearly has skill that, if refined, could make a very useful asset to the guild. That is another one of his two arguments, that and, you know, unknowingly being in guild-reserved hunting grounds. Uh, opposing counsel, it pretty much leans on the fact that poaching is the most heinous crime in the guild. It's treated worse than murder, and, like, your punishment should be death. Philip, on any of the, the claims about, um... About her having killed the Espinas, it's, it's more more willing to speak on that in a way that isn't just sure. If that's the story we're, we're running with, um, what does she, is at she point, say about uh, she that? She at one point is like, "I don't understand what's what the issue is. I I succeeded. I killed it. So, but I killed it. I proved I was stronger than it. <laughs> Why are you? I upset? killed it. It didn't deserve to live." It couldn't beat me. If it can't, I beat was me, more it worthy of survival. I was more worthy. This of is the survival. law. This is the law of the, the land here. We're talking this about this is the law of nature. Which I, mean, which I believe you as monster hunters seek to uphold in some variety. I don't really know what your fucking code is. Hunter code is to is to keep balance with nature. Which poaching goes against, in their mind. Okay, but she won. <laughs> but she... I won, is the thing. So it didn't deserve... Again, it did it, not deserve, it deserve to live. So after, you know, all these comments and arguments are given, the three... The three council ju or judges presiding over... Your case, Tulip, they stand, they bow, and Mika looks to you, Tulip, directly. Thank you for your input, counselors. We thank you for your input as well in this matter. I believe we have reached a verdict in this case. Mika looks to Queen Colv, who nods. He looks to Amber, who nods as well. Both of them approach him, and they hand him two small slips of parchment. Mika has his slip of parchment in front of him as well. And the two of them depart from the courtroom. Mika once again returns to his seat and looks at you as well as he unfolds the two pieces of parchment. Miss Gilgamesh, would you once again approach the central podium for your verdict? Yeah, sure. In the matter of Hunter's Guild versus Tulip Gilgamesh. This council has ruled 
guilty by technicality in your favor. Oh, really? <laughs> she said that she loud? <laughs> oh, really? No, oh, really? Wow, really? I'm gonna be wow. honest, I did not think you made a strong case, but hey, if that's... If that's how you want to rule it. Well... It remained undetermined for our council whether or not you knowingly or unknowingly were inside or outside guild reserved hunting grounds did not decide the, our verdict. Your verdict of skill is what has decided this. Wow, really? She's like, I'm genuinely shocked. <laughs> What does she take that as? Do, like, is that is that her for? Is that Tulip just interpreting it as a compliment of skill, or just like she's like something well, so obvious? Uh, well, it's obvious she did not think that these people would actually uh, even consider Side with her. Even consider her uh, uh, what's the word? Her ideology um, as a as a potentiality. So she's like, she's like shocked that that her saying uh yeah it didn't deserve to live anyways so in any way contributed it contributed to her getting a not guilty verdict to be clear miss gilgamesh your ideology is not what was the deciding factor here oh. your skill is the only factor that was taken into account specifically as the ultimate final verdict. That seems kind of like a backwards way to have laws. That being good at thing at a skill just makes you immune to the death penalty. I mean, I don't. This very much is a special case. In, like, this specific instance, this is absolutely a special case. Philip, again, speaking, all, saying all this out loud. Uh, she doesn't know. She she did not... She doesn't know. She also, even if she did know, she would not give... She wouldn't give a shit. She's like... Who... I mean, Who the fuck appointed you? I mean, sure, whatever. So I get to leave? Not quite, Miss Gilgamesh. While you will be spared death penalty, you are still in debt to the guild. As I presume Counselor Deora has explained, he looks briefly over to <laughs> Counselor Deora, who nods that he did explain it. So, Miss Gilgamesh, by the power invested by the guild and me, you are debted to the Hunter's Guild in the form of ecological balance. In short, you are now a guild-mandated hunter. You work directly for the guild as your punishment. So, so I committed a crime got sentenced to guilty on technicality and my punishment is that you're giving me a job i'm just making sure that this is just way better than my last uh my last child i'm gonna be real with you this is a way better result Tulip is Tulip's mind is just like what the f is going. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I'm all here for it. <laughs> so, Miss Gilgamesh, you are now a licensed hunter of the guild. Your new duty is to protect the ecological balance of this world, as well as the people that live in it however already doing that. however the guild still retains certain discretions 
The following rites of the guild are as follows. If you reach the mandatory hunter retirement age, the guild reserves the right to call you back into service at any time. If the offense of poaching is committed, again, the guild can revoke this ruling at any time in favor of the death penalty. Any weapon you choose to carry as your given weapon of choice must be left at any guild hall of any settlement. That's not going to be an issue. I, I thought I, I explicitly went into detail about how I killed that thing with my bare hands. And Is that any... not made explicitly to clear? It was made clear. <laughs> he, 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 he clearly knows that you're, like, he knows exactly that you killed it with your hands. He's just reading this off as just, like, He's reading it off, like, everything that the guild, like, reserves the right to do, huh? in case, like, you do this again, and the shit that they can do to you. Like, he knows full well you killed an Espinas with your bare hands. The shit that they can try to do to me. Lastly, any payment and reward collected from each quest completed is cut by 75% of your earnings. That uh, is all. I'm getting paid at all? I mean, all right. Tulip, Tulip's not gonna say no to getting paid. All right, well. Oh no, such a terrible thing for me. Tulip Gilgamesh. Hulip Gilgamesh now can convicted basically murderer. Has convicted murderer and poacher literally just gotten a f literally now has an excuse to kill more things and she gets paid for it. Oh no. <laughs> like, does like like a like a mock worried gesture with her hands. Whatever shall I do? So as Mika like departs from the chamber and like the guards are, like, ready to take you back to your cell to, like, just kind of finish, like, processing you. And, like... I don't do that shit. Counselor Deora also approaches you. He... He kind of, like... Like, I... He puts his hand over his mouth to kind of, like, like, the same to, like, Hey, I'm gonna whisper this to you, okay? Okay. Thank you for not fucking this up. I mean... She shrugs. Well, you will be provided guild housing. In the city, your first quest will be at an undetermined time. All I know now is that once your hunting party is completed you will have your final test that is all i know at this time i am rusty when it comes to how hunters complete their examination by the guild all right good day miss gilgamesh and the opposing council again kind of comes up to you like he puts his hand out like to kind of shake your hand I guess Tulip looks at it is Tulip gonna no. shake his hand <laughs> no she's not a shaking hand type Tulip doesn't give a shit Philip also yes. has both of her hands bound, and shaking hands would be awkward anyways. I mean, she- her okay, her- I might have described that badly. Her hands directly are not bound, it's her wrists that are like- You can still kind of move them a little bit, they're just kind of shackled, so you can't move them fully. You can still shake a hand 
if he wanted to. But I assume Tulip just kind of doesn't want to. Unless Tulip can fully shatter this chain in a show of, of uh, strengths in order to shake this guy's hand, she does not. Do you want to try? Sure. Athletics you know what, check. let's go. <laughs> Whatever you're most comfortable with, because there's multiple options, you could go for that. Athletics chat. God Ouch. damn it! No, <laughs> the fuck. one. Fuck you! I'm burning martial focus. Fuck. Okay. You you can do that. So go ahead. Twenty two. All right. So you know that like, <laughs> you know that one scene in the Superman movies where like he's handcuffed and he just kind of stands up and breaks it. You mean like in 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 the, his intro to Injustice? Intro to Injustice, where he just yeah. breaks the chains. <laughs> Yeah, Tulip just, like, just like, fully, sh like, <laughs> rips her arm up, uh, and it's fucked up because she's not pulling it out of a surface. She also has to, to exhibit the leg strength to keep her leg like that, while she tears uh, the chain in half and extends a hand to to shake. So she she didn't she didn't tear the leg shackles. She just kind of moved her arms up and tore. The arm shackles. Am I correct in how um, she splits the chain at the center? But if the the thing about it is, since her arm is chained to her leg, normally just pulling up like she does would just move your leg in a fucked up way. Her leg does not flinch even a little bit from the. Uh, from oh, the I see. So you shake uh, Selva's hand. <laughs> How, like, how firm of a handshake is this? Is this just kind of like a basic, or is this just like a full-on, like, this is like a shake? Oh, death grip. Death grip. Do you want to make a strength check for that, actually? I, do you funny. want me to make another athletics check? Yeah, let's see how, let's see how cool Not this good. is. She expanded her a lot of her energy, shattering her, uh... Yeah. Alright, so, you still... So, you still definitely are stronger than Salva, as it is right now, but, like, it's a simple handshake, so... Probably not the best measurement of how strong someone actually is. Yeah. Welcome aboard, newbie! I look forward to seeing what you can do. You're being Who knows? You're being awfully... Uh, amicable towards a towards a convicted murderer. In it, you're a hunter now. In his mind, you're a you're a member of the fan of the hunting family. Oh, that's a mistake. But no, she Who does. Knows? She does. She says that out loud. She says you're awfully amicable uh, for for being within five feet of a convicted murderer prove it in time who knows you might even take on an elder dragon one day oh i will with your help he, or not he just he he has like the absolute like biggest grin on his face is that a promise i like to think of it more as an invitation his grip also his grip tightens selva's grip tightens so like around your hand as well all right, <laughs> taking down an elder dragon it is. I look forward to hearing about it, newbie. And he walks off. I guess I'll off. see you around, Edgeworth. <laughs> She's not <laughs> calling him by his real name ever. She, she will never call him by his like his real name. But she does have marginally more respect for him than anyone else she's met today. Now, why is that? Why does to why is to why is uh, Salva the only one who has gained marginal respect from Tulip? Because to he seemed to be to, to to like meet Tulip on her level, where where he's like he was sort of. What do you mean by Tulip's level? What levels Tulip on? Well, he was he's like. He's putting forward the idea of Tulip. He's supporting her ideology of her being the most powerful thing in existence, and she likes that. 
<laughs> so essentially ego stroking. Yeah, no. It's just ego stroking. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so the guards... Their weapons are not drawn, but you can tell you kind of put them on edge a little bit, because, like, oh, fuck, she could have broken them anyway. Oh, wait, hold on. She, uh, sl sl like, brings her hand, like, chop motion through her other arms, James, and she just cuts them in half. All right, let's go. <laughs> The guards just, the guards kind of look at each, like, they're not really sure what to do. Like, you broke, like, you did, those weren't, like, regular metal chains. Like, those were monster-infused metal chains. So, like, that had monster material that made it stronger. <laughs> and you broke it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Let's go. You better be taking me to guild housing and not back to that fucking cell. We are not taking you back to the cell, Miss Gilgamesh. We're taking you to the entrance of the prison to get you good properly checked back out. And that is where we end your one-on-one -on -one session. This is fun. This was... Uh... We'll be up front with the audience the second time we recorded this session, which is why we skipped the combat. Yeah. Um, uh, audio got scuffed. Yeah, it it's it's the same situation. Not it's a little bit different than the situation that happened with uh, Crescent King. Um, but uh, similar sort of thing. I'm on a new computer now. Uh, but thanks for coming out and watching. Uh, do all the things if you came like and subscribe. Way. You know, yeah, do all the things that you do on YouTube. Um, to help boost our engagement if you think more people should be watching us. If you don't think people should be watching us, don't do that. Bye now! <laughs>